Today I'm going to use the Manage Switch Port Mapping tool to map a Cisco 3550 switch. This is the IP address of the switch, and this is its read community name. This is the IP address of an HP printer, and this is its community name. So to get started, we press Map Switch. First thing it does is it pings the whole subnet. You can change what gets pinged, not just the subnet. As you can see, the interface descriptions, the interface name, and if you had any custom interface descriptions, they would have appeared here. The interface types, the VLAN appears in this column, the status of the port, and the speed of the port, and the duplex mode appear. Then you see the MAC address information here, and if we're able to match the MAC address to an IP address, it appears here. And then we do a hostname resolution because we asked for it over here and you can see the host name in that column. Then the interface manufacturer based upon the MAC address is shown here and how long it's actually been up or down since the last time change is shown in this column. And right here you see the spanning tree information. This is the report that appears in the web browser as a result of mapping the switch. You can see the time the report was done. You can see the version of the software used, the IP address, the switch name, and information about the switch. Then you can see the number of interfaces that were actually being used, which how many were up, uh, spanning tree protocol information. You can see a list of other known switches attached to this switch. This is correct. And known routers and it did not see any virtual machines attached to the switch. Here's a report of the ARP table mapping analysis. Pulled this information out of the local ARP table from the computer. This is from the switch and that other device which was an HP printer returned nothing and then we were not using the second device. The timing report here shows how long it took to retrieve certain bits of information from the switch and the alternate devices. And then down here, you have information about the database and where it's actually stored on your computer.